iOS 17 is the latest update to Apple iPhones, and although I've seen plenty of people talking about upgrades to iMessage, FaceTime, and call notifications, all of that is just cosmetic. Here's what you need to know in terms of the biggest privacy and security improvements that are coming your way. This video is sponsored by Proton. If you're not using encrypted email calendars and cloud storage, Proton is what I use and recommend. So of the many announcements that Apple made with the upcoming iOS 17, which also comes with a new iPad and Mac OS, there are seven that I found to be particularly interesting. Now, the good news is that these features legitimately add a strong layer of privacy and security. But the bad news is that much of it is only valuable if you use Apple's native apps. The best example of this is the upgrade to Safari Safe Browsing, which allows you to lock private tabs that can only be open with your biometrics. In fact, Apple's changed the way that you organize all of your open tabs, which I find really interesting. I mean, personally, I'm the kind of guy who absolutely hates keeping open tabs anyway, but if you're like my wife, you might have more than 100 tabs open at one time, and it it seriously drives me nuts. Anyway, in the settings for Safari, you'll find a new option where you can require Face ID to unlock private browsing. In practice, it looks like this. When using Safari tabs, if I scroll over to private tabs, you'll see that it shows it's locked. All I have to do is click unlock, I'm verified with Face ID, and the tabs are revealed. Even if you don't use Safari, it's good to know that this kind of feature even exists. Whether you're a, a Chrome user or if you prefer Brave like I do, browser lock is easy to turn on and pretty convenient to use. iOS 17 comes with what they're calling enhanced lockdown mode, which now covers an Apple Watch, which I don't have, and adds stricter protections on certain functionalities. Now, lockdown mode was first introduced in iOS 16 and marketed as an extreme privacy setting specifically for those who feel like they're being targeted by spyware or high-level surveillance. I did a video on this last year and concluded, like many others, that the trade-off between security and convenience really wasn't that bad. In other words, the impact on my daily usage of the phone was really limited. I don't keep it on all the time, but even when I do, I barely notice it. To give this a try, you'll go to your settings app, find privacy and security, and then scroll all the way down to the bottom for lockdown mode. Now you'll have to restart your phone to activate, but don't worry, it's just as easy to turn it off if you don't like using it for some reason. This new check-in feature is exciting to me and I wish I had more opportunity to test it out. I'll explain why I can't in a moment. But here's what usually happens for me. If my wife is going out one evening to, let's say, visit a friend, I might ask her to let me know when she arrives at her destination or when she's starting to head home so I don't get worried about her. We even have it set up where we can each track each other on the Find My app, but I have to open that app in order to know where she is. The new check-in feature promises to not only make this much easier, but also to have this information end-to-end -end encrypted, which is huge. Check-in is done through iMessage, and if my wife were to use it, I would be given updates when she arrives at her destination, and if she takes an abnormally long time to get there, it would let me know that as well. The catch here is that this feature is only available between two phones that are both updated to iOS 17 or greater. So if you get this message saying that check-in is not available for this recipient, that is why. The fact that this data is end-to-end -end encrypted is incredibly important to me, and I think it should be to you as well. In fact, End-to-end -end encryption should be something we enable for pretty much all the data we transmit and store online. That is the number one reason why I trust and recommend the products offered by Proton. Now, I'm grateful for the fact that they're sponsoring this video, but if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know that I've used Proton products for many, many years. I have a legacy Gmail account, but my secure communications happen with Proton Mail. I've used numerous VPNs over the years, but when somebody asks me which is the best one for privacy and security, I point them to Proton VPN. I'm even testing their encrypted calendar option right now because I don't like the idea of Google knowing everywhere I'm going to be and who I'm going to be meeting with. The Proton iPhone apps are really well designed, which makes it a super easy transition that you'll barely even notice. If privacy and security are a priority for you, visit proton.me slash allthingssecure to create your own free account today. 
The new communication safety feature designed to protect children and the similar sensitive content warning designed for adults blurs out or blocks inappropriate images that might be sent to you in, let's say, messages via AirDrop or even through FaceTime. I'm gonna use Apple marketing materials to help you visualize what this looks like because I mean, I like testing things out for you, but the idea of sending my wife an inappropriate image for the sake of B-roll. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. No, I mean, no for everybody. <laughs> and according to Apple, the technology that flags these images as inappropriate processes all of that information on your device so that neither Apple nor any other apps can access the content. I think more than anything, this is a protection for children, one that I would want for my own boys, and ultimately it prevents that unwanted spam that can sometimes find its way into our messages. The idea of sharing passwords is nothing new, but if you're a person who stores your passwords in Apple's keychain, you'll be happy to hear that you can now create groups where everybody in the group will share access to the account logins you set. You could create a permanent group, like one for your family, or you could create a more temporary one, like say a set of passwords that you share with a babysitter or a house guest. Just know that whatever you share will be known by those people. So even if you remove them from your shared group, you might still need to change the passwords to those particular accounts. This new feature hasn't been widely publicized or even talked about for some reason, but I think it's a pretty big step towards a mass adoption of pass keys. Instead of trying to explain what pass keys are again, let me just show you what this looks like. Basically, from now on, your device itself serves as both the password and 2FA key for your Apple login. Let's say I wanna log into my account on apple.com. Right now, it gives me the option to continue with my usual password or I can sign in with iPhone. This is a pass key, even though it doesn't really say that outright. I simply scan the QR code with my phone, verify with my face ID, and I get logged in automatically. People much smarter than me have convinced me that this is a significantly more secure method than using traditional passwords, and that this type of passwordless login is where we're headed in the future. I think many people will be getting their first taste of what it feels like to use a passkey with this iOS 17 feature. Okay, here's another cool feature I haven't seen many people talk about. If you've ever received a spam call or one of those unknown number calls, you're gonna love the fact that iOS 17 introduces a new setting to silence unknown callers. When activated, callers who aren't in your contacts list will go directly to the new live voicemail. The phone won't ring at all, and this new voicemail feature allows you to see a live transcription as the caller speaks to know if you wanna pick it up and talk with them after all. Again, Apple says that all of this processing happens on the device itself and isn't shared with Apple. And it's another great way to increase your privacy by limiting how much junk you have to sift through on your phone. I've enjoyed using iOS 17, and I encourage you to upgrade when it becomes available. Thanks again to Proton for sponsoring this video. At the very least, go set up one of their free accounts to start taking advantage of greater data encryption and privacy for all of your internet communications.